Well, hello everyone. This is Chuck King, still in Panama, in my hotel room in Rio Alto, and I'm uh, I'm going to leave at 3 a.m. in the morning on Monday, April 26, 2021. So I'm going to do this video on Sunday afternoon, and then put it up tomorrow sometime because I won't be able to do it while f flying and going so early in the morning. So this is chapter 26 of Deuteronomy. I'm going to skip some of the chapters that have, you know, the kinds of things that don't seem to be relevant anymore from the law, some of the little details and practices that, that were important at the time. But uh, as New Covenant believers, we, we just don't, uh, have much interest in those things. So I'm going to move to chapter 26 and uh, talk about the first fruits and the tithes. Chapter 26, verse 1. When you have entered the land, the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it. Take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. Now we know that ended up being Jerusalem, of course. This is before they actually entered the, the land still. And say to the priest in office at that time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our forefathers to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God. My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, putting us to hard labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. And you and the Levites and the aliens among you shall rejoice at all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. So this is some interesting teaching about how God told the, uh, Moses to teach Israelites after they've entered the land and uh, they should take the first fruits. That would be the very best of the first fruits, the first growth of their of their produce from the land, and then go before the Lord and uh, make this make this confession to the priest. Uh, it's very interesting, recounting the Lord delivering them from bondage in Egypt. And they're supposed to place that basket full of the first fruits of their crops before the Lord and bow down before him. I thought that was interesting. And then it says in verse 11 that everybody involved in this will, will enjoy, rejoice in those things which God had given them the first fruits. So th this first fruits or this giving of the first fruits would be shared by themselves, the Levites and the aliens. Uh, so it was it was for a multitude of people, not not just the Levites in this case, but in this case, this first fruits offering went went to support aliens as well be the poor among them verse 12 when you have finished setting aside a tenth of all your produce in the third year the year of the tithe you shall give it to the levite the alien and the fatherless and the widow 
so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. So now we're, we're continuing this thought about a tithe every third year. And every third year tithe that would, yes, it would help the Levites, but it would also help the aliens and the fatherless and the widow. Those would be the poor people who would need support from the Israelites who had an abundance. And that's, that's what this every third year tithe was used for. Verse 13, then say to the Lord your God, I have removed from my house the sacred portion and have given it to the Levite, the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all you commanded. I have not turned aside from your commands, nor have I forgotten any of them. I have not eaten any of the sacred portion while I was in mourning, nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor have I offered any of it to the dead. I have obeyed the Lord my God. I have done everything you commanded me. Look down from heaven, your holy dwelling place, and bless your people Israel and the land you have given us as you promised on oath to our forefathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. So this this 10%, this tithe, every third year tithe, was not to be used for anything else. That They, they have to confess that. I didn't use it for any wrong reason, but I used it for the Levite and the alien and the fatherless and the widow. And then the, they, they sought the Lord for his continued blessing. This was a very serious thing when they, they brought the first fruits and the every third year tithe. It was something God commanded them to do. So they took it very seriously. Verse 16, the Lord your God commands you this day to follow these decrees and laws Carefully observe them with all your heart, and with all your soul. So here's another exhortation to carefully obey everything that God has taught them, has revealed to them in the law. Verse 17, you have declared this day that the Lord is your God and that you will walk in his ways, that you will keep his decrees, commands, and laws, and that you will obey them. Tremendous emphasis on hearing and obeying the word of God. And the Lord has declared this day that you are his people, his treasured possession, as he promised, and that you are to keep all his commands. He has declared that he will set you in pray, set you in praise, fame, and honor, high above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord your God, as he promised. So, This reminder to the Israelites about God's promises, this covenant he has made with them, but their responsibility to meet the conditions of hearing and obeying his word. And and then his promises would fully come to pass and the blessings he promised they would receive. So that's a short chapter, chapter 26 of Deuteronomy and talking about, again, the emphasis on the tithe under the law, in this case, bringing the first fruits and the tithe in the third year, and how it was to be used uh, for for the Levites, yes, but also for aliens, and that that every third year tithe was for the also for the fatherless and the widow. So we know that they wouldn't neglect the Levites in the giving of the tithe. So however they did it, and this isn't exactly totally clear to us whether it was a a separate tithe every three years uh, in addition to their tithe that they gave every year and there there can be an argument for three tithes or or two and a a third tithe I guess you would say the tithe they would normally bring to support the Levites then the tithe they would they would use to celebrate the three feasts with their families and then the every third year tithe Uh, which they would share not only with the Levites, but also the aliens, the widows, and the orphans. So it's interesting how the Lord provided for the people, not only only the Levites, but also the poor, through the bringing of these ties of the people. And we we can learn a lesson from this because we know that, that God loves a cheerful giver, and it's more blessed to give than to receive. 
and that God promises that if we sow generously, we'll reap a great harvest. And not only will we reap a harvest uh, of, of, of just of some prosperity or some blessings, material blessings, but he said he will make all grace abound to us in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. He will make all grace abound to us in response to our concern for giving generously and willingly to help the poor. So this is why when you're looking for uh, something that can confirm in your life that you're doing the will of God, examine your giving habits and see if you are giving correctly. People just right away say, oh, I'm not under that legal system anymore. I don't have to tithe. But the principle of the tithe is all throughout the Bible. And uh, Jesus said about the Pharisees, about the Jewish leaders, that our righteousness should exceed their righteousness. So their giving standard was the tithe, and uh, they were very dedicated to it. So the principle of the tithe is, is a good place to begin to see whether you are giving correctly. And of course, there, there are these free will offerings for the poor that you can make argument here that the Jews already had built into the law that we as new covenant people can also see the need for giving free will offerings above uh, our tithe to help those who are poor. So under the old covenant, they helped the full-time ministers. Under the new covenant, teaches we should support the needs of the full-time ministers. Under the old covenant, we have a provision for the poor people in the land. And under the new covenant, of course, we know that we should be giving to the least of these because when we do, we are giving to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this short lesson from uh, Deuteronomy that you would bless us with understanding, personal understanding of how we can do your will in our giving habits. May May our giving habits bear great fruit for your glory, be pleasing to you, and be, be good examples for others to see. We ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So when you see this video posted on the YouTube or, or Facebook, know that this was done on Sunday, uh, the 25th, but it is the teaching for Monday, the 26th of of uh, April. God bless and keep you, and may the Lord's will be done in each one of us. God bless.